Mr Speaker, well, the National Party have just spent the last half an hour or so trying to convince New Zealanders that they are interested in the issues that matter to them. Well, tonight in the House, they're going to get a chance to vote for an issue that matters to New Zealanders. They can choose to vote to extend paid parental leave to 26 weeks. So the question is, will they? Will they put their money where their mouth is and actually deal with that issue? Or will they do what they've been doing for weeks now and filibuster to try and delay that bill from having its vote in Parliament tonight? Because I think those are the sorts of issues that New Zealanders are going to judge this government on. The government would have you believe, the National Party would have us believe, that they are wanting to do things that actually are relevant to people. But we're going to see whether that's true or not when they debate tonight. Because are they going to spend a lot of time talking about the electronic transactions bill, the tiny little bill that really doesn't impact on anybody at all? Or are they going to let the House get on and vote for extending paid parental leave to 26 weeks? Because the government has a problem. They've got a problem. This bill defeats the government. The only thing that stands between families and 26 weeks paid parental leave is that government, because there are the majority votes in this parliament who will vote for that. And I think all of those parties who really are dealing with the issues that matter to people, because if families can get 26 weeks paid parental leave with their newborn babies, then that will make a huge difference to people's lives. It will mean that the bonding and attachment that we know now, we know from all the research and evidence, is so important to actually helping children develop well. If we can get that right, then we will have a much better future in this country. And the only thing that stands between now and that future is that government. So we'll get to see tonight whether they're going to do that. And they have gone very quiet because they say they are going to deal with the issues that matter to people. Well, what I want to know is which people. Are they the people who are in the Cabinet Club? Are they the people that they're talking about? Because I believe they are. Someone um, actually sent me a, a tweet today, which I think said it all. They said, Sue, have you, do you know what the Cabinet Club handshake looks like? Of course you don't, because it's done in very deep pockets, and you don't get to see it. Because it is done. That Cabinet Club handshake is done in very deep pockets. And with people who want to have the money to buy influence. And that's been the theme of the last week, because while we've been addressing issues that matter, like extending paid parental leave, the Prime Minister's been spending his time trying to defend all of his colleagues, all of his ministers, from being donkey deep into dealing with people who have the money to buy influence. So, order, what are those order, problems? order. I'm sorry to interrupt the honourable member. I just remind members that when we're having a debate, People may interject on the speaker, but they can't interject on each other if they don't have the floor. It's very discourteous. I call the Honourable Member Sue Maroney. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I've obviously touched a nerve there, but what's the theme here? Judith Collins working with Oravida, with people who have the money to buy influence. Morris Williamson actually going and finding the police to actually defend somebody who has the, inf the money to buy influence. And then we find out that they're all doing it. All of the ministers are involved in these cabinet clubs. And I'd like to know from the members opposite, the next person who gets up and speak, speaks for the government, please tell us all of the electorates where these cabinet clubs operate. Where are the electorates where these cabinet clubs operate? Or maybe in five minutes you're not going to have time to list them all. Maybe it's going to be quicker to name the electorates where there are no cabinet clubs in operation. Because I think this is happening up and down the country in every electorate, I'm guessing, that there are going to be these people who belong to this exclusive club. They belong to, they pay money to belong to this exclusive club for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to buy influence with ministers in the national government. And I want the members opposite to name any of the electorates held by their MPs who don't have a cabinet club, because I think that, well, well Toe says he hasn't got one. There's one member who's order, going to be honest order, about it. Order, order. Member's full name. Oh, 
Tohenati, the Honourable Tohenati, says he hasn't got a cabinet club, but he's on his way out anyway. So I want to know from each one of those members opposite which one of them has a cabinet club, who's in that cabinet club, and what influence are they buying when they join up to the cabinet club? Because I think that those are the issues that we need to hear from before we see their budget. Hey, Mr. Speaker. It would help, yes. It would, it would. Tēnā, I call Mr. the Honourable <laughs> Member Honi Harawera. Tēnā, Tēnā koe, Mr. Harawera. Kia ora mai ono rā tātou katoa. Uh...